Welcome back to CT Style. The Connecticut midterm election is rapidly approaching. It takes place November 8th. Joining us now with important details leading up to the polls is John Erlinghauser, Director of Advoc Advocacy and Community Outreach at AARP Connecticut. John, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Natasha. Great to be here. Important election. It includes races for the U.S. House and Senate, State House and Senate Governor, a number of state offices. You say that the adult population 50 and up is a really important vote. Why is this? Candidates should be paying attention to those who are voters 50 and older because they make up about 70 percent of all the people that are going to vote in this upcoming election. So ultimately when it comes down to it, the 50 plus voter are the deciders and they're going to be the deciders in this election. Mm -hmm. So candidates for office really should pay attention to the things that they care about. Absolutely. And it's important um, that those adults are informed as well for what they're voting on. So what's new this year and what should voters know? A lot of important things that voters should know when it comes to the who, what, where, when and uh, how to vote. Yep. And that's, uh, for example, we have expanded absentee balloting. Uh, you know, in previous uh, elections, it was very limited in terms of who could vote by absentee ballot. In uh, this election and all elections moving forward, you can vote uh, if you're even out of town for just a little bit of time, you're able to vote by absentee ballot. Um, any kind of illness, you're able to uh, vote absentee ballot. So, for example, if you're still worried about COVID, you can vote absentee ballot. Doesn't mean you have to be sick. If you're a caregiver for a loved one, you can now use an absentee ballot. And you can also use the drop boxes that were used in the previous elections. They're now a permanent thing. So you don't have to rely on the U.S. mail. You could drop your application and your completed ballot off into the drop box at your local town hall outside. And uh, it's easy as that. And uh, you'll get your ballot and you'll be in good shape. That's a big deal. And when do people need to get these ballots? What's the so deadline? So a completed ballot, mm -hmm. so it's a two-step process, an application and a ballot, but a, a completed ballot, if it's received by the town clerk of your town by 8 p.m. on Election Day, November 8th, you're good to go. Okay, and you say on the ballot also early in-person voting, huge deal yeah, as well. Yeah, this is a, a big thing, a referendum to allow uh, in-person early voting. So there'll be a question asking if the state of Connecticut should change the Constitution to allow the legislature to create uh, rules for in-person early voting. We're one of only four states that doesn't have it. So if voters vote yes, um, we're in, we'll begin the process of making Connecticut one of those states that also has in-person early voting. Hopefully making it easier for people to vote. Absolutely, that's what we're here for. Yep, and uh, before we go, you say it's crucial to ask candidates certain key questions for maybe AARP members or adults over the age of 50. What are questions to ask? Uh, you know, on the state level, you should ask the candidates for governor and others questions about how they're going to address allowing a vo uh, voters to keep more of their hard-earned money as they retire, you know, more tax breaks for them on the retirement income, uh, addressing healthcare workforce needs uh, in nursing homes and long-term care settings, uh, you know, lowering prescription drug costs. And, and then when it comes to, you know, like you look at the cost of gas, you know, providing more access to alternative forms of transportation. Federal level, addressing Social Security and Medicare are always top of A mind. A lot at stake here. John, great info as always. You can learn more at aarp.org slash ctvotes. John Erlinghauser from AARP Connecticut. Thank you. Thanks, Natasha.